Right, let's talk about clean code. What does it mean to write clean code? If you ask 10 different developers that question, then you'll probably get 10 different answers and sometimes conflicting answers, sometimes incredibly philosophical answers, but there's one phrase that comes up again and again when you ask people about clean code, and it's this, code should be self-documenting. Self-documenting code sounds like one of those ideas that makes sense until you actually have to do it, because what does it actually mean? That's a relatively abstract concept if you think about it. Does that mean put more comments into your code? Does it mean more descriptive variable names? Does it mean just put a readme at the top of your repository and call it a day? Well, no. When people talk about code that explains itself, what they usually mean is this. You can read it, you can follow it, and you don't have to guess what it's doing. So it doesn't rely on comments, although a few well-placed comments can still help. It doesn't have to try and be clever. It definitely doesn't hide all of the important logic in an obscure regex or bury three layers deep in some kind of utility function or something like that. Self-documented code tries really, really hard to be obvious. And often at the cost of performance, often self-documenting code isn't the most performant algorithm. It's not a leak code challenge. It's sometimes a little bit less efficient, so you get the efficiencies of how quickly you can work on it. Because when someone's reading your code, and remember that someone might be you in the future, um, when someone's reading it, they're not just reading it like a story, they're building up a mental model of what's going on inside your functions. They're asking questions like, what's this function actually doing? What are the inputs to this function? What's it supposed to return? What are the edge cases? Are they, has this function got side effects or is it a pure function? Why did you write this function this way instead of the way that I wanted to write it? And every time your code makes them stop, even just for a second, that mental model falls apart. Now some of that is just the nature of software, right? Code is abstract and I'm always going to require some effort to understand somebody's code. But the more friction that you can remove, the easier you make that process and the more likely it is that someone can actually follow your code and they can trust it. So let me show you what I mean, right? Here is a really horrible function in TypeScript. It's called M, it's got A, B, and X coming into it. This looks like something that's been minified in TypeScript. This is probably the least documented code I could ever come up with, because I did, I sat there for ages trying to think of a really badly documented function. So what I'm gonna do now is write this function out, but using much, much clearer variable names and function names and syntax, so it's obvious what this does. So the function is actually called calculate total, because it's adding things together, and the arguments are gonna be called amount, adjustment, and is adding because that's what the logic is doing. And then the return statement is gonna say, if is adding, return amount plus adjustment, otherwise return amount minus adjustment. So just this small change, this is exactly the same logic, sure I've used a ternary instead of an if statement, but this, um, this logic here has made it so much more obvious what this is doing. It's calculating the total. It's calculating the total between this amount and the amount that you want to adjust it by. And if you're adding them, then it pluses them together. If you're not, then it minuses them together. That's the same logic as up here. It's just I've written this in a much more documented way. Um, and I haven't had to put any comments on this or anything. I haven't had to do any like inline comments like this. Um, you don't necessarily need to do that if your function is clearly defined in a nice clear way like that. Um, let's have another example that's a bit more complicated. Have a look at this. This is saying process and then I've got you and that is a type any. So I haven't even got the benefits of having a bit of self-documentation by using static types. Um, and then that's just sort of going, well, what's it doing? It's returning an error and then it's doing a weird map um, joining in and then returning users has devices. So I guess this is returning whether or not a user has some devices, but who knows? Let's write this one out again as well. So this function, firstly, is going to take in a proper type. So instead of taking in any, we're going to create a user type and that's going to have an account with some devices and that is going to be an object with a type property and it's going to be an array of those objects. I can call the function process user so it's a bit more obvious what it's actually doing and it's going to take in one of those users as an object. And then we're going to say, if the user's uh, account doesn't have any devices on it, then return error, so no devices. We'll make our error message a little bit more descriptive as well. And then we're going to map out the device types. Um, so we're going to say user.accounts.devices.map, and then we're going to map device and then device.type. And then from device types, we're going to create a formatted string from them. So we'll say device types are join and then with a string and a comma. And then we're going to return user has devices and then formatted string. So there's a bunch of changes we've added in here to make it a bit more self-documented. And let's go through these one by one. Firstly, by using this type, it makes it much, much more obvious what this object being passed in is. A lot of people will say any is easier or quicker. A lot of the arguments for JavaScript over TypeScript say it's quicker to write. But quicker to write 
genuinely means longer to understand later on. And hours of software developers, <clears throat> they're not cheap. So the first thing we're going to do is our map our object into an actual user object like this. Um, we're going to call it process user, and then we're going to return a much more descriptive error message if there are no devices on that user. Up here, we're just returning er, uh, and this is another important point for self-documented code. Self-documented code has descriptive error messages. It has error messages that actually mean something. So if this code was to throw an error somewhere in your code, then you know it's because that user you passed in didn't have any devices. If it was just going to throw er, uh, like it is at the top here, then you actually have no idea what went wrong. So part of self documenting code is making sure that your error messages are as descriptive as possible so that if any runtime errors happen, the runtime error is part of the documentation. The next thing we've done is we've split this one line out into two lines. So we could have written these two on one line. We could have said user accounts devices map and then dot join at the end here. But by splitting it onto two lines, it's a lot clearer what we're actually doing. This variable device types is only used once. It's only used on the next night. So you don't strictly need it, but it makes it much, much more obvious that this is a two step process. The first step is taking the user and it's mapping the devices. We've actually used the word device inside the map function. A lot of people just put X, but if you put device, then it says what this is. Um, we're mapping that into a list of device types. So you can see it's a list of strings. And the next line, we're taking that list of strings and we're joining them with a comma to get a formatted string and we return the formatted string. So this is a lot more clear. You can scan down this, you can read this code. You can say, okay, we're checking for some errors. We're mapping some device types. We're creating a formatted string and then we're returning it. So this function immediately, you can look at it in a glance and you can see the three things that this function is doing, the steps it's doing um, in order to achieve its one thing. This one, on the other hand, is completely horrible. So it's the same logic, it's the same result, but one of those makes you really work for it and the other one just explains itself. And that's really what clean code comes down to. It's not about perfection, it's not about purity, it's not even about the most important, like the fastest algorithm, it's about clarity. Your code isn't just there for the compiler, it's for the next person who has to read it as well. It's for your teammates, it's for your tech lead, it's for your junior engineer who's learning by reading all of your pull requests. It's for your future self who's trying to figure out why you did that six months ago. Naming, structure, types, tiny pure functions and error messages, these aren't just nice to have. They're the actual tools that we have that help us reduce the mental load and we make our code a lot more maintainable. Now, does this take longer? Then yeah, it does. This bottom version of the function here is a lot more to type out, but it's a trade-off. If you spend those few extra minutes now, then you can save hours down the line of your time or somebody else's time. There'll be less debugging, there'll be less context switching, there'll be less like pausing, destroying your mental model of the abstraction and trying to work out what it's doing. So here's a challenge for you. This week, I want you to find a function that you wrote recently, something that works, but it could be a bit clearer. Rename the variables, extract helper functions from it if it's doing too much, add types to it if you're not using types, remove that thing that you thought was really clever, but it's actually just confusing. And when you're done, ask yourself, would a new teammate on their first day understand this function without having to ask you? And if the answer is yes, then congratulations, you've written code that explains itself. So I hope you like this video, check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, I'm James Charles and this is Trains Code on YouTube.